Hello everyone, Neil here with Real Terrain Hobbies and welcome back to uh, this week's vlog update on the Medieval House Project. First off, a quick apology, this is not Wednesday, I had said I'd release this on Wednesday and it is now Sunday, so it has been a little bit of time since then. I did not anticipate how much editing I would be doing with this, it is just as much as I'm doing on the main um, tutorial. Uh, tutorial slash work log and uh, yeah so it has taken some time my apologies there but let's get on with the video so this video is a summary of all the work I have completed over the past week and it will include the start of our second level as well as I plastered the interiors uh, walls of the first level and uh, we can see how that turned out now quickly what we have less left for the first level is uh, some interior stairs that are going to be kind of a more ladder style stairs going up in the second level, some flower planters for the exterior walls, a handrail for those exterior sta stairs on the upper landing, got to paint the fireplace, uh, paint the walls and weather them and I'm actually going to use a product called Crackle to create a cracking effect and it should be pretty nice. Uh, I've got to do uh, some touch of paint on the outside rocks and add moss to those as well as some stains uh, kind of to just make things look a little more natural. Uh, I've got to touch up some staining on the wood, uh, get rid of all that those plaster marks that are over there. I still haven't done any of that and clean all that up and then just finally some all around weathering of all the parts of the building. So I started off by creating the base for the second level of the building. And you can see that I notched out a section there alongside the stairs to allow for your minis as you do need room to get up those stairs. And so I went ahead and created a floor plan. You can see what I've done here. Two small rooms on the side, one large room up at the front with the stairs going up and there will also be a spot for the stairs coming up from the main level. So here we have all our wall pieces ready for gluing. I went ahead, cut out the doors and the windows, and we are ready to glue. For most of my joints, I use a product called PL Premium. It's a construction grade adhesive, and the reason why I decided to go with this is for longevity. I don't want my walls ever accidentally coming apart, or for that matter, any of the wood pieces that get put on. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, before any of the wood pieces would ever snap off at the joint, they themselves would more than likely break in half than uh, the glue joint actually coming apart, which is why I've decided to go with it, just basically for longevity. Now the only downside is the cure time for this glue is about 24 hours. So if you hadn't figured it out yet, as you can see, I went ahead and made a window right directly where our chimney is coming up, which is of course not going to work. So I set our level aside for the glue to dry and I'm going ahead now to put the plaster on our first level. The plaster I'm using is the same as I used for the mortar in the rocks. It is basically a plaster of Paris type product and has a pretty fast cure time uh, about five minutes so you ought to work fairly quickly but don't rush yourself and if you find that you're running out of time just stop wash out your current batch of plaster that you have and make a new batch the tools I'm using to uh, spread this around are just the army painter um, sculpting tools there's three in a pack but any sculpting tool will do. I have a little scoop on the one end and a sharp end on the other. Um, but I found that to actually the three pack from Army Painter, uh, all, all six ends, there are three, three of the tools, but each there's an end on either side. And all six I actually found myself using and have been very helpful. So I would recommend the uh, three pack Army Painter. And if you're not wanting to purchase any sculpting tools, you can get away with more than likely using just a spoon, a butter knife, and some toothpicks to spread the plaster around. And I'm sure you could get away with it just fine using those. 
So all we are doing is adding our plaster to the gaps and spaces that we want the plaster in our walls and just simply spread it around to all the corners and edges, clearing up all the gaps, making sure I have the right thickness applied. And once I do, simply give the uh, model a shake and uh, shake it around a bit. You can even tilt it to the corners and its edges if you want to help spread the uh, plaster around and smooth it out. And giving it that shake once the plaster has been adequately spread will give it a nice smooth finish. So now that our glue has dried, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the space for our chimney and build that in as well. So what I'm doing here is marking the inner edge of the chimney on the first level. And from there I'll measure back an inch and a half, which is the length of the interior space in the uh, fireplace build out on the main level. Placing the second level on top of the first, lining it up, I uh, marked out the depth at which I'll be putting or cutting out our chimney. and do a final check just to make sure if things are properly lining up. Next, I cut the pieces for the build-in for the chimney. Just remember the interior pieces have 3 16 of an inch cut off for the thickness of the uh, base of the foam, bo foam board. And uh, the exterior piece will be the full length top to bottom uh, of the outer wall. And I just went ahead and glued those on. And I felt that this window was now too close to the chimney. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue in the panel that was cut out and then recut in the window afterwards. Uh, a little closer to the front. So now I'm going ahead and getting a start on my wood pieces. Uh, what these are here, it's just the cap for the uh, exterior, or, yeah, the exterior wall <clears throat> all the way around. I'm going to be putting a cantilever uh, at the front again, just like I did on the main level. This time though, it won't be sticking out quite as far as the uh, one on the main level, but it'll add some character anyway. Here I'm marking out my corner pieces. Go ahead and make five of these for each of the five corner pieces protruding our building. Careful here as you do this next section, it's really easy to get your fingers in the way of your blade and end up with a nasty cut. But what we are doing now is cutting out a corner, half of the thickness of our piece, which will be glued onto each of the corners of the building.
Now you can see I did make these a little too tall. The wall cap and cantilever will um, obviously be in the way of the little part that's jutting out, but just go ahead and cut that off. So in all my wood pieces, I go and I shave them down, um, carve them up a bit, just to take away that smooth flat edge and give it a hewn look. And what hewing is, uh, in many of the times they didn't have saws, so you don't get the flat boards that we see now. They use uh, really sharp axes and took away the round, kind of rough edges of a log. And then you end up with these marks on them that would normally be from an axe and gives it that kind of old world look. And I repeat the process for my remaining wood pieces. Next I'll create the vertical wood pieces that I'll be using on either sides of the windows and various places around the building. To make those, I use the quarter inch balsa sticks, cut them to length, and then from there, cut them in half lengthwise down the middle. To frame out the inside of the windows, I use the 3 16 square balsa sticks. For the top and the bottom of the window, I cut that in half lengthwise, put them in place, and then Cut the two side pieces which are full and not cut lengthwise. With this many pieces it's easy to lose track of everything so I make sure I keep all the separate pieces in their own piles and I'm sure to make sure those piles don't get mixed together otherwise you end up with a mess and are easily overwhelmed. So here I'm cutting out the perimeter side panels. These will be used to sort of uh, dam in the plaster all around the building and uh, this will be sort of a cap on both the bottom and the top. So I cut one piece to length and then from there cut it lengthwise uh, which gives me the two uh, pieces for the top and the bottom. I'm going to be covering up the bottom of this level and probably the first as well uh, with some flat balsa wood to give it a nice finished uh, look to it. So what I'm going to do is use these uh, flat balsa panels and just cut them to size, uh, stain them and glue them on. And here I'm just marking out on the panel where I want to cut it out and actually have some stone uh, in place for the chimney. So for all my wood pieces I go ahead and use a steel brush to texture the wood and give it that uh, fine kind of grainy look. And now what I'm doing here is just cutting out the pieces uh, for the bottom of the second level and uh, these will be my spacers that will be used to, uh, for fitting the top level into the bottom. So here we are now with a good uh, batch of wood prepped and ready for staining. All this took quite a bit of time. I want to say a whole afternoon to prepare. More time consuming than you would initially uh, guess. And here I'm just cutting down those corner pieces that I had uh, talked about earlier being a little too tall. Going ahead with the staining here. This is another time consuming process. Um, took, took quite a bit again to do this maybe 20 minutes or so. 
But all I'm doing is making sure all sides are covered with the stain, just brush it all on. And after that, you take um, some paper towel and make sure it's wiped completely dry, and then that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the other stain to stain the bottom panels um, from the base of the level. And again, brush the stain on and wipe them dry with your paper towel. And now that the staining is all done, it's time to go ahead and uh, glue on the base panels. Just make sure. Um, yeah, it's adequately, you got enough to go on there that uh, nothing's going to be kind of sticking up and uh, coming off later, but just, uh, yeah, that's good enough what I got there. And I'm going to start off with the base caps or the base panels along the base of the level and from there sort of move upwards. Now I'm framing the interior of the windows with the window pieces. You didn't get a good look last time, but the uh, top and bottom piece are actually the smaller 3 16 square uh, pieces of, of balsa, and they are cut in half, and then the two sides are the full uh, 3 16 pieces that are not cut in half lengthwise. Now we get to go ahead and glue all our corner pieces on, which you got enough glue. Don't have too much where glue starts squirting out and uh, you have mess on your hands. But just put enough on there that it sticks adequately. And, uh, and here are our uh, panels for the windows. I made quite a bit of these. You're going to be needing a lot. I think I made around 10 or 12 initially. And I'm probably still going to need even more because these will also be going on the interior of uh, the uh, interior walls as well. And already, just with those few pieces glued on, things are already starting to look pretty good. And uh, it's starting to look kind of like an actual level for our medieval house. Now I'm going ahead and gluing on the cap piece uh, for the walls as well as the front pieces for our cantilever. The spaces in between, I haven't cut those yet, but that'll be a quick little process and you'll see that uh, I'll cut those out and glue them in, or sorry, and stain them and then quickly glue them in. 
And while I'm on the cap, I also put the side panels on. This was a little bit tricky. You might want to wait for the caps, the glue to be dried on the caps. But because of the long uh, cure time for this glue, I just wanted to get it done and I did it now and I managed, managed it all right. Didn't have to wait and uh, yeah, it worked out all right. And again, we're going to be plastering this level. So that's why I have these uh, kind of caps, I guess you would call them, or these outer panels. Uh, they're used to, to basically just to dam that um, plaster in place and uh, make things a little easier for ourselves that way. And here I made the uh, pieces in between the cantilever there for the cap. I uh, just quickly cut them and uh, throw some stain on them and glue them on right away. And then off camera, I also did the same for these uh, cap pieces as well. I had made a second one already and I just cut them to suit and then uh, threw some stain on the ends where I made my cuts. So now that all our pieces have dried overnight, I'll measure out where I want the, um, the second level to sit and use those measurements to glue on the spacers below to have our, uh, our second level fit nicely into the first. And I went with the square little blocks of the spacers for moving side to side and then the long length pieces uh, front to back to keep things uh, sturdy that way. But uh, you don't have to use those little blocks. You can just position the longer pieces to fit nicely along the, the sides of the building. But I wanted those longer pieces to match up with the two bottom um, cantilever pieces coming off the front to look to make it look as if they're actual joists running along the length of the building. But really when you flip it upside down it doesn't really even you can't really even tell that that's what it what it is doing. Here I'm just um, I put it on underneath I get it I get it lined up to the one side where I want it and using that pencil uh, I push the piece underneath to the one side and now I'm measuring from that one side that is set to the other side uh, where that uh, spacer needs to be and that it ends up getting me the results that I want. And there we have it, our perfect fit. I leave that to dry and that is as far as I made it for this week. So thanks guys for watching. 
Sorry again, it took so long to come out. I'm really gonna have to work on finding ways to streamline things and uh, make them a little quicker. I would like to get a video out every week, so I need to figure out how I'm gonna do that. But be patient, and these will keep coming, don't worry. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.